But Jesus Christ is the answer. You need to fear God. I tell you, you know, you know the Bible talks about the, the great whore that rides on the beast. Did you know that? Revelation? It says that God is going to avenge His saints upon her. There's something about this great whore that has to do with the end of all things. These women who give themselves over even to the unnatural things of their flesh, women with women committing what is unnatural, men with men committing what is shameful, receiving in them the due error of their penalties. That's, that's, that's what's going on. That's the truth of, of this campus. It's the truth of this, this, this whole community, this whole world. It's the things that, that, that caused Jesus Christ to be that man of sorrows. To be that he was broken. He weeped and wailed and mourned over cities. Over his city, Jerusalem. The Bible says that he was in the world. He made the world, but the world did not receive him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But to those who did receive him, he gave the right to become the children of God. To such as believe in his name. So it's sad that Jesus came to his own, his own didn't receive him, but you know what? It opened the door up for us to receive him. You can receive God. Times of refreshing that can come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that because, because with God is the fountain of life, and with the, in his light we see light. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of his wings. They're abundantly satisfied with the fullness of his house. Oh. Oh, just keep walking by, just just like drones. Just keep just God just or the, the God of this world just loves it that you're on the broad path. Go ahead. No one regards has any regard for their eternity, do they? Maybe you do, huh? Yeah, you do? Care about your soul? I, by you walking away, that shows me you don't. <laughs> How do you know your soul is in a better place than mine? Why are you like broadcasting? Well, this is good. It's a little bit of life now. Speaking. Well, okay. Can I, can I start with, can I answer your questions? Yeah, that's fine. But I haven't finished the question yet. Okay. You, you, just, well, you, just answered me, you just asked me two questions, so don't, don't bombard me too quick. <laughs> it, could, it could be multiple questions in one. Like, then, I know, but I want to answer, I want to make sure I don't lose track of what you're saying. So I'll do it one at a time. How do you know your soul is in a better place than mine? Because by you sitting out here and preaching, you're pretty much saying that you have reached certainty without a doubt, right? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. All, all your life you've been going through and like, well, people like to think that they've reached a point where like they know most of what, what they're doing is right or the yeah. right path. Yeah. But now, um, just like you were in previously in life, you came to a point where you're like, okay, that's it, I got the answer, right? Yeah, where I knew that I, I didn't have the answer at one point, right? Like you're saying, and then all of a sudden, I, God woke me up to the fact that I, that I needed the answer and then he gave it to me. Is that, you know, because here's the thing. Um, are you, can I ask, are you Muslim? Uh, no, but um, okay. it's, a, it's a good generalization. Yeah. Not a not a big not a big. I just the reason why I ask this because you know a lot of times people who follow other religions they ask questions like that. How do you know your religion's right? Mine's not right. Not not a big deal. But the thing about it is is that with all the things that we have to choose from in this earth, because you know, it's, isn't it true that we have to die someday? Right. Right. No one, no one's going to deny that fact. And at that point, you know, we're we're going to be we're going to be at the mercy of something that we don't fully know exists. Right. No man has died and come back and says, hey, you know, I know exactly what happens. But what we do know is, is that we have a testimony that there is one who died for all mankind and gave up his life. You know, take the Muslims, for example. Muhammad didn't claim to have died and then was rose from the, rose from the dead by the power of God. He didn't, he didn't make that claim. Neither did Buddha. Neither did all the other false religions out there. And God kept that, that, uh, that exclusive, pure message of grace to Jesus, his son. So you ask me, how do I know that I'm following the right way? Well, the, Jesus himself testified. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He said, no man comes to the Father but through me. So I, unfortunately, I would love to just preach a, 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 an acceptance message and say the homosexual gets in and all these people get in and all the unbelievers get in anyways, but, the, but I am constrained because I know God changed me, he saved me. I had heart failure four years ago. I know that the word is true because the word of God is what saved me. And it's it's what I live by, and I see the miracles of God. I could give you. Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask okay, you what, what was your second question? Because you had a very important yeah, one let too. Let me ask you a question. Uh, did God come to you when you had your heart failure? When you when you? Recovered? Oh yeah, he, he drew me in. And he talked to you. Well, the the, 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 the actually the Lord gave me dreams, and I heard His voice audibly in, in a couple of dreams. But here's the thing: the Bible says the Lord speaks in a still small voice, and He speaks through His Word. Day in to day utter speech. Just like when you go to college, you trust in a book, right, that has knowledge in it, right? 
Well, that knowledge came from God, and he has a greater level of knowledge that governs the universe. It's his spirit. It's, it's his very way of salvation that I'm preaching to you right now. Let me ask you a question. Okay. If, if God came to me and told me that uh, uh, Christianity is bullshit, like what, we've, what, they've, uh, what they've turned it into now after Constantine the Great, and the people who wrote the Bible, which was not Jesus himself, uh, what would you tell me? Well, first off, I mean, you know, the Bible says that all scripture, no scripture. But the Bible wasn't written by, by Jesus himself, so I can't yeah, count. Yeah, but it's the same thing with, look at this, okay, look at the textbook, for example. Uh -huh. uh, or look at this, okay, who wrote the paper, the computer or the person typing the, in the computer? Well, the, 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 the person put the ideas in Okay, the but the computer was what? It was a vessel that was used by the person to write the paper, right? Right. I mean, we can't deny that. Well, it's the same way. Men were used as instruments. That God, let me finish so you can understand where I'm coming from. Men were used as instruments. God was using them like a computer to type the words out. Just like how men receive things, knowledge, and they write them in a book, and you read them as a textbook. They're not the original point of that information. The scientist didn't, didn't create the knowledge. He just received the knowledge, and he wrote it down to you, and you trust him. And that's what the testimony is, that the men that God included to, to, to give us this message, it says that they, they knew from the Spirit. They saw Jesus in person. It was, a, it was a first-hand account. They saw the miracles, and they were willing to give their life for it. They wouldn't give their life for something that wasn't true. Would you give your life for something that wasn't true and you didn't know wholeheartedly, yeah, right? If, if I believe something that's not correct, hey, hey, and hey, I write it down, hey, Jesus is an alien. I know, no, I'm not. Hey, why don't you not distract this young man from, from talking? We're having a serious conversation. He's an alien. Hey, if you want to... If you wanna, if you want to sit here and, you know, the Bible says you're in grave danger if you sit and you try to stop the work of God. Why don't you let me have a conversation with this man? Or are you getting frustrated? I'm not frustrated. I'm warning you. I care about you. What does that have anything to do with anything? My faith, my belief. So you call Jesus an alien, but yet you have a cross on yes, your neck? He's an alien. How are you going to... Oh, that right. makes a lot of sense. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Uh, if you're, I mean... Uh, Pretty rude, dude. There, there's, there, there's a. Well, it's it's kind of rude to be on a stereo phone when everybody's exactly. talking. Exactly. I'm not being rude. I'm not being rude. No, I'm, no, I'm called could, to preach. It, it, could, it could be his right, but I'm saying it's still rude. Oh, that was the other question you had. But, but I'm just saying, like, let, let's not like call names, but or point fingers. Come on, yeah. we're just. I'm, I'm just trying to like talk to you guys because no, you are really trying to distract. No, I don't mind talking with you, but you can't hey, interrupt hey, us. Hey, that's, that's not nice to interrupt question, us. Man. You're religious? No, I'm not religious. I have a relationship with God. You have a relationship with God. I follow true religion. You believe in Jesus the way I do. No, you, you call him an alien. Yeah, he's the Bible doesn't call him. Alien. He's the, he's the son of God. Yeah, okay, but uh, no, 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 he's okay, not an alien. Where are you getting that from? Name, Wait, where are you, you getting that from? If you're if you're a creature, if you're a creature on another planet, what is your perception of God? What is your perception of Jesus? He's he's God in the flesh. But you're gonna have some. He's not an alien. You're gonna have you're gonna have a totally different interpretation on what Jesus and God is. No scripture is up for private interpretation. That's what I was trying to tell if, this man if here. If you're on another planet, you would. That's fine. You you go ahead and follow the lies that you're following. Lies. No, you do. You deny the word of God. I'm trying to I'm trying to explain to him a basis for this man about you know the, the word of God is true. You know what the book of Enoch is? Yeah, I don't read it because it's not it's not. Because it's, it got taken out of the Bible by who? That's not. That's no. That doesn't matter. The Bible says that if you were to take, if you were to take every account of Jesus, it says all the libraries would not would not even be able to contain the books that were found of Jesus. We have an accurate, uh, uh, handwritten testimony of the power of God, of the books of the God. And I'm so, trying to explain to this man how and why so it's why true. And then you come in and say that Jesus is an alien, which goes against the Word of God. And so you expect why, me to have to bear along with that? So why, no. Why are you getting frustrated? I'm not frustrated. Yeah, you are. Oh, okay. I'm frustrated. No, I'm 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 trying to I'm trying I'm called to preach, and you're you're trying to stop the preaching. Okay, look, you're the one who's frustrated. You're frustrating the grace of God is what you're doing. I'm trying to talk to this man here, Amen, and you came to interrupt me. That was that's what's called rude. So back to what we were talking about. Okay, um, so my my whole thing is, if uh, the books, the accounts that were written uh, by Jesus' disciples, yeah, they were written by people that were imperfect. Would you agree with that statement? Well, at the time, they, they, they had repented of their sins, and they were... See, that's the thing. People don't understand the word perfect. Biblically, the word perfect... Jesus said, be ye perfect, for my Father is perfect. Uh -huh. David said, I will walk in a perfect way. The, 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 the Bible uses the word perfect. Look at, a, look at a baby that's four days old, right? She, she's perfect. But, well, man, this is important to her, okay? Because then maybe it'll help you how God uses human beings. Look at a baby that's four days old. It's perfect, right? No blemishes, beautiful little baby. But it can't read. It can't drive a car. It can't make food. It can't tie its shoes, right? It still needs to grow, but there's no blemish in that baby, right? When that baby becomes older now, and, it and if it follows a way that's sinful and evil, it becomes imperfect again, right? And God, through Jesus, what he does is he buys us back and he makes us perfect. The Bible says he casts our sins out from the east as from the west. And he, he tells us to go and sin no more. Now we come back to that place of completeness. It doesn't mean we're, we're totally mature. We're not, we're not Christ in the flesh. 
But we're, we are clear before God. He sees us perfect as perfect. And these men of God, they were perfected in Christ. They had a clear conscience before God. They had a channel through Jesus to hear the truth. They didn't malign it. They didn't put their opinion in it. They heard from God, and it was without favoritism, because God doesn't show favoritism, right? That would be evil, wouldn't it? He gave it to us blanket. That's why people don't like the Bible, because it's so raw. It's so real. But, th but that's my question but to you. How, 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 can, how can I accept well, I'm not saying anybody took anything out of it. Bible says don't take anything away from the Word of God. The took things out of the Bible throughout the ages. Let, let me ask you now, the, the Word of God is complete. If someone were to take the complete Word of God and take words out of it, then they'd be in trouble. It doesn't mean if they take a whole book out, because it's suspect. Right, but, we have an accurate... But, there's a reason why... Go ahead, sorry, go ahead. I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Why would you call him an alien, man? It's, Your double-minded man is unstable and all he does... No, 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 no. I'm going to call you out on that one, man. That's fine, that's fine. I, that's fine. But that's why I'm here. Because, you know, I met you for a reason. I met this okay. gentleman for a reason. Just like in my church. You know what we preach? What we preach is, hey, I meet you. I put a smile on my face. You're going to smile. You smile, it's going to put a smile on his face. And you know what? That's going to help the world. What I'm trying to listen to. What about the Bible, man? I care, I care, I, I care about God. I care about love. And I yeah. want this world to succeed. I, and I'm telling you right now, these people, they, they, they don't know it. They're never going to know it. But when, yeah. when you attack them... Okay, I believe the Word of God, man. You, you, you've given me your side of things. I believe the Word of God is true. And the Bible says to go and preach the gospel to every it's creature. Like, it's like you that's like fine. You can follow your, put a smile on people's face, and that's the gospel. That's not in the Bible, man. But, but, what about the Bible? Sir. What about the Word of God? But the thing is, you have to, that's what you're missing. You're missing the foundation. God wanted people together. They wanted people to come together. God wants people to receive want their Word. To come together. And when, the, you, when people come together, they... No, no, yes. God has no fellowship. God has no fellowship with workers of iniquity. How can God have fellowship with evil? That's because there's people. Then, then everybody would go to that, go to heaven. That's because there's people like you that just, just constantly. They what? What do we do? They just throw the, the word of fear. It's not. I don't fear God. You don't fear God? Well, then then you then you're not a Christian. There's no way you can be a Christian. You don't love God. God, I love this. Earth. If you fear, I love all. No, you don't. You're a liar. You're following I, I'm lies. A liar. That's your opinion. You're following. No, it's the it's the Bible's declaration of what you are because you don't fear God. You're a and, fanatic. And you're the a Bible says you you you, you dis disregard the word of God, and I stand for the word of God and the God of God. God will show you that the word is true and that, and that you're wrong. So, we'll get back to what you're saying. What's, what's more superior? It's the truth. It's the word of God. What's more superior? To follow somebody because you love them or because you're scared of them? Well, see, this is what people don't understand what the fear of God is. The fear of God is not the same as the fear of man. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as lions, but the wicked, they flee when no one is pursuing. The fear of God, it says, is clean and endures forever. The fear of God, it says, those who fear the Lord, it says the angels encamp around that man to deliver them. You actually showed me this. Hold on, let me finish this point. Because the, Bible's, the Bible says that there's two kinds of fear, there's two kinds of everything. There's even a belief that the demons have. It says even the demons believe and they tremble, but they don't, they don't, they don't have the right kind of belief, right? Because they're demons. They, they left God. The fear of God, it says, is by which men depart from evil. It's a healthy fear. It's like a child that has healthy fear of its parents. What's that fear do? It teaches that child, right? He gets spanked a couple times real hard, or he puts his hand on the stove, and the child, the next time, he doesn't do it. So it's, it's a different, it's a spiritual thing. It's, it's a healthy kind of fear. It, it gives us an awe and reverence for God. And, it, and, and you know, the Bible says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Without the fear of God, and I hope you're just ignorant, and I hope you would change your mind about that. Of course you are. For you to say not to fear God is ignorance. Well, you can't call anybody ignorant. Well, of course it is. The Bible says they are. Okay, if, you, if you say that you're following something, you say, I don't need to fear God, you're ignorant. Or you're just in, in rebellion towards God. You can either, you can either, agree, I agree with the word of God. I, I stand for the word. Biblical ignorance. Isn't it clear? If you say I don't have to fear God and God says it's the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, then what else is it? Church. Yeah. And when they in church. Out of the Bible, exactly. Well, well, it's in the Bible that it says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. There's an angel that had the everlasting gospel. He said these words in Revelation 14. The first words out of the angel's mouth was, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the time of His judgment has come. No, you don't. Don't lie. I I'm called to preach. I'm going to continue to preach. It's by grace that I even stopped the preaching to talk with you. I'm not called to stop and talk with naysayers. I'm called to preach the truth. I'm called to call you to repentance. And you've departed from God. You follow the God of this world, whose name is Lucifer. And I'm telling you that if you don't turn from your sin and believe the Bible, that you'll end up in the worst danger. Jesus said, it'd be better for you not to know the way of truth than having received the holy commandment to turn. It's like a dog that returns to his vomit. You call Jesus an alien, and you call me the enemy? 
Oh, man. Oh, man, that's ridiculous. Man, the, Jesus said it would happen. People would depart from the truth, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. Oh, I just love God. I don't fear God. Well, where's that in the Bible? Come on. God is a consuming fire. Are you kidding me? Jesus said himself in Matthew 10, he said, don't fear man who can only kill the body and that's it. He said, fear the one who has power to destroy both your body and your soul in hell. This is, this is, this is the word of God I'm talking about. This is not a handwritten, man-written, you know, doctored up piece of work. God, if God is God, he is able to preserve his word. If God is God, is he not able to preserve his word? He protected his word for you. And I think we miss that. I think we think, because you've had your Bible sitting on your shelf for all these years, since you were a child, that you think it's just another book, but you don't understand there's people out there who don't have the Word of God. There's people out there that, that, that wish they had the protected, um, pure Word of God written down from the apostles themselves who saw Him. Oh, that's the judgment upon this country right here is what we just saw happen. Men coming up, rejecting the Word. Men questioning and trying to, trying to prove God's Word wrong. Why would you try to prove God's Word wrong? Why would you not... Listen to God's Word. Why would you not? But hear God's Word and humble yourself before the Word of God. God is not near to the proud. He's near to the lowly. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Are any of those people up there you, sir? If so, you need to repent. You're in danger of the fire. It's coming, the judgment. We all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account. Ma'am, I'm more concerned for this old lady than I am, I think, than any of these kids. You know why? Because if you're, if you're not in Christ, you are so close to receiving the end of your, your life of what, without faith and your sin that it terrifies me. You could be one breath away from standing in a place where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I am more concerned these last days for people who are older, who are about to die if, they, if they're not in Christ. Maybe some of these kids will have 90 or 70 more years to, to hear some preaching and maybe repent, but some of you older people have become so hardened, so religious, so calloused, so blinded, and you don't know that one day you're going to take that last step, and then all of a sudden you're going to be receive all the fruit of your unbelief and all the sins. Oh, but God, God can reach you even now. Turn to Jesus.